What's up guys? If you've ever written a really detailed blog post before, such as a product review, one pain point that your mobile visitors tend to run into is they don't have a table of contents that's accessible to them at all times. You know, if you have a table of contents, usually it would just be at the top of your mobile page. And then as they're scrolling down through your blog post, they don't have access to the table of contents unless they use a scroll to top button or maybe they manually scroll all the way to the top and many of your users are not going to do that. And so I thought, why not try to figure out a solution so that we could show a table of contents that's accessible to your mobile users at all times and it would also work on desktop so that they work fluidly together and that way your users would be able to access your table of contents and go to whatever section of your blog post that they want. And so I figured out a solution with cadence fixed elements and cadence conversions, and I'm gonna run you through step-by-step -step how that works. And so I have this outdoor tent review, and if you scroll down here, this fixed table of contents button shows, and this button will show throughout the entire blog post and if the visitor then taps on this button, it slides up your table of contents. It shows every one of your headings within your blog post automatically. And then say they wanna to go to the product pricing, they could click that, it'll scroll to the product pricing automatically and it will close out of the table of contents and they can continue reading. And then if we just go to desktop here really quick, the button will show on desktop as well in the bottom right here. And at any point they could click this, they could go up to the product pros, and it will scroll to that section there and you'll be good. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Jake from startblogging101.com. Let's get right into it. Now, before we begin, really quick, in order to do this with Cadence, you will need to purchase the full bundle rather than the essential bundle. And the reason for that is because the full bundle comes with Cadence conversions. And we're going to be using Cadence elements plus cadence conversions to be able to do this. And so you will need the full bundle to do this. Uh, there, is a, there is an annual fee for it. Otherwise, there is a lifetime full bundle, which is just a one-time cost. It's a lifetime deal. That's what I purchase. It's been my favorite purchase of the entire decade. It has so much value in it, but that's for another video. But I just wanted to let you know that you will need the full bundle in order for this to work. I will have a link to the full bundle in the description below. So if you are getting the full bundle or if you're upgrading the full bundle, I would really appreciate you using my link. It goes to help support me and the channel so that I can create more free tutorials like this for you. So once you have the full bundle, you'll wanna make sure that you have Cadence Pro, which is the Cadence Pro add-on for the theme, activated and installed. And then you're also going to want to add Cadence conversions and make sure that's activated as well. You also wanna make sure you have Cadence Blocks installed, which is a free plugin. And that is going to give us the blocks or the table of contents that we're going to be using to add within our conversion item. And then you can go into Appearance and Cadence right here and make sure that you turn on the hooked elements here. And that's what we're going to use to be able to get our Cadence fixed element, which we'll use for the table of contents trigger button. So the very first thing we're going to build is the conversion item itself, which is the slide out. And so on the left hand side here, I'm going to go to conversions, click this, and then I'm going to choose add new. As you can see, we have a few different options here. We have an option to do a pop up, a slide in or a banner. For this tutorial, we want our table of contents to slide in. And so we're going to choose the slide in option here. And then you can see we have a few different templates to choose from, but we don't want any of the templates. So we're just gonna choose this one that says start blank. Once you start with a blank template, the first thing I'm gonna do is add a title up here and I'm just gonna call this table of contents slide out. But you can call this whatever you want. This is just for your own internal purpose. And then in the lower right here, this is our slide out and this is where we're gonna add our blocks. So I'm gonna click here and then I'm gonna do a slash table and you can see table of contents here. And this is through the free Cadence Blocks plugin that I made sure you installed from the beginning. Once you click that, you can see that there's a table of contents here, and you can see that it says, start adding heading blocks to create a table of contents. But why the Cadence table of contents block is so powerful is that whatever page you automatically add this on, it will go and dynamically read every single one of your headings in your post. And so it's going to automatically fill this out for whatever post you're on. And so that's super powerful. And in the allowed headers here, I'm actually going to turn off H1, H4, H5, H6. So I'm only gonna show H2 and H3. Now you can tweak this to be whatever you want. The more headings that you show, the taller your list is going to be, and it will still scroll just fine. But I like showing 
fewer headings, at least for the table of contents, especially on mobile, so that you don't totally overwhelm your users with headings. And so you may just wanna show H2s in yours, but for this example, I'm just gonna show H2 and H3. Then if you open up the title settings, I'm not gonna change anything here, but you can turn this off or on, and you can tweak how you want the title to look. And then for the collapsible settings, I'm gonna open this up, but we don't need to do anything here. We don't want the table of contents to be collapsible in this case, because we're showing it with a slide out automatically. So I'm just gonna leave all of these turned off. And then the last thing I'm gonna change, at least with the table of contents, is I'm gonna to go to the scroll settings here, and I'm gonna to toggle on the enable smooth scroll to ID so that when they tap on that, it will smoothly scroll right to that heading and it'll look a lot nicer. So we're gonna turn that on and you can leave the scroll offset to 40. Now you can obviously style this table of contents however you want. If you wanna go through some of these settings and make it even more fancy, you can. But for that, that's gonna be good for now. And then I'm going to go back to the conversion item here. And so two ways you can do that is you can come up here to the list view and you can see that my table of contents is inside the conversion item. Otherwise, in the bottom left here, you can see that one level up is my conversion item. So I'm just gonna click that and I'll get out of the list view here. And once you click that, your block settings will now change for the conversion item. And so we're gonna run through these conversion item block settings quick and get this all set up. So the very first thing is launch triggers. And this is what is going to actually launch your conversion item. And so you can see you have a number of options here such as time delay, or exit intent and several other ones. But for this, we wanna choose custom link. And so this is going to give us a custom trigger link. And so we can take this link and we can plug it into our button so that when we click the button, it will go in and it will automatically fire this slide out for this conversion and show our table of contents. So you'll wanna take this trigger link and you could just copy it somewhere or just keep it in mind because we will use it for our fixed button that we'll be making right after this. The next section is conversion settings. So I'm gonna open this. We want slide in and then enable analytics tracking. I would turn this off. The analytics tracking is mostly used for actual conversions, which is what Cadence Conversions is essentially used for, but I'm kind of using it for a, a different use case here. And so I wouldn't suggest having analytics tracking on this because it doesn't really tell you a whole lot. But then the conversion goal, I'm actually just going to change this to click button. And I'll actually go over this at the end, but just change it to click button for now and we'll circle back to this. For repeat control, we don't want anything like this, so we can ignore this section. The position settings, you can see that it's horizontally aligned to the right. You could vertically align this somewhere else other than the bottom. I mean, you could change it to middle or top, but the one thing you'll notice is you will have to change the box shadow because the box shadow is meant to just have it on the bottom right now, but I do like it coming up from the bottom anyway, and that's what you're probably gonna want on mobile. So I would just leave it at bottom and horizontally aligned to the right. For size settings, you definitely wanna keep the height as auto here. And so what that's gonna do is it's automatically gonna grow your conversion box here to be as tall as your table of contents. And so that will look really nice. And then you can change the maximum width, but I would suggest a maximum width of 400 pixels because that will look especially good on mobile phones. If you wanna do some container styling, you can go in there. And then the next section we're gonna look at is target pages. And so these are all the pages that we want this conversion to show on. And so for me, I only wanna show this on blog posts. I don't wanna have this show on my homepage. I don't wanna show it on landing pages or anything like that. This really only makes sense for me to show it on blog posts so that users can see table of contents for product reviews and other things like that. And so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna scroll down and under posts here, you can see that there's single posts and that's all of your blog posts. And so I'm gonna choose single posts here and then you can see that it's currently selected to all. But you could come in here and you could actually group these. And so say you only wanna show this table of contents slide out on a certain category of blog posts or blog posts that are tagged with a certain tag. You can come in here and you can do that, which is really nice to be able to filter that down. But I wanna show this on all blog posts, so I'm gonna just choose all here. And then if you wanna exclude a certain blog post, say there's one or two blog posts that you just really don't wanna show this on because you have something else showing there, you could come in here and you can exclude that specific blog post in this section here. The next section is our target visitors. We wanna show this to all users, which is what it defaults to. And I'll just leave it as that, but you could come in here and you could show this to only a certain amount of users if you want. And then target devices, 
We're gonna show this device on all. Now you can come in here and you can show this only on desktop or tablet or mobile only. And so that's just up to you and what your use case is. For me, I'm just gonna show this on all devices because I think it works really well for both desktop and mobile, but you can come in here and tweak this to only show on a certain device. We don't need to do anything for target requests or scheduling. And then for animation settings down here, you can change this if you want, but the open animation is to just fade in upwards, which I really like that. And then when you close out of the conversion, it will just fade out. And so I like these default animations myself, but if you wanna change these, you can. The very last thing we're gonna tweak for our conversion item is we're going to go to the close settings here. And when you open this up, you can see that you can enable the close button or not. I would definitely suggest keeping this on. The one thing we are gonna change is the position defaults to be outside of the box. I'm gonna change this to be inside the box and you can see that the, the button moved down here. And the reason for that is because if you do have a number of headings, especially on mobile, we don't want even more space to be used by the X button outside of the conversion item. So let's just move that X button from outside the box to inside the box and that will give us a little more space to work with. And then the alignment, I like it just being right and at the top. And then I like the button just being an icon, but you can come in here and choose text if you want and that chooses to be closed and then you can actually customize that to say whatever you want but I like the icon, it's very simple. And then if you wanna change the icon size, you can come in here and do that as well. So that's it for our conversion item with our table of contents in there. So we have our conversion item right here. We have the table of contents block in there. Now keep in mind, this is gonna automatically read in all of our headings, no matter what post it's on. And so it's gonna look fantastic on every post. And you can add this to all your posts within less than 10 minutes, which is super cool. And so before we make our fixed button here, we just wanna publish this so that we make the conversion live. So I'm gonna publish this here and I'm gonna click publish again and we're good. The cadence conversion is published and now let's go back and create our cadence fixed element button that triggers this cadence conversion. So I'm gonna to go to appearance and then elements here and then I'm gonna click add new and you'll see a few options here for your element type. And for this, we want a fixed section because we want a fixed button in the bottom right. So we're gonna choose fixed section here. For the title, I'm gonna call this table of contents trigger button. But again, you can call this whatever you want. This is just for internal use. And then we're gonna create our button here. And so let's come down here and click here and I'm gonna do a forward slash and type advanced button. An advanced button is the cadence button from cadence blocks that we're gonna be using. So let's choose this. And then over here, you can see your block settings. I'm gonna open up button one settings here. And the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add my icon. And so I want an icon only. And the reason for that is because I want this button to be really small. I don't want it to be really wide and filling up the user's mobile screen. And so I just like using a simple icon. And so in order to do that, we're gonna go down here we're gonna scroll down and, and click on the icon settings and you can search icons here. I'm gonna start typing list and you can see you have a number of options for list and I'm actually just gonna choose this second one here. So you can see it added the icon right here. And in order to show the icon only, if we scroll down here, there's a toggle to show only the icon. And so there we go, we have only the icon, but it's still not perfectly symmetrical here. So in order to fix that, we're gonna scroll up and for the button size here, I'm actually gonna choose this cog wheel, which gives us the ability to have custom padding. And so choose this here. And then for the top and bottom padding, I'm gonna do 10. And then for the left and right padding, I'm gonna do 10 as well. And as you can see, that's now a perfect square, but I wanna make this circular. And so in order to do that, let's just scroll down here and the border radius right here, I'm just gonna type 30. And you can see that perfectly rounds up to be a perfect circle with the appropriate amount of padding. And so that looks fantastic. The very next thing we're gonna do is set the colors of the button. And so under the normal tab here for the text color, I'm just gonna choose my main accent color on my website. For the background color, I'm going to specifically choose it to be white. And the border color, I'm also going to have it be the main accent color. I will add a box shadow to the normal state. So I'm gonna do an X value of zero, a Y value of two, and a blur value of four. And so that just adds a little tiny bit of box shadow under there. It's probably hard to see in the video, but it just gives the button a little more depth. And then let's go up here to the hover tab. And so for the hover state, I actually want it to look the exact same same, but I want the box shadow to be more prominent. And so let's choose the hover text color to be our main accent color again, the background color to be white, and the border color to be the main accent color. 
And then we'll also toggle on the hover box shadow. And for this, I want it to be a little more prominent. So I'm gonna do an X value of zero, a Y value of two, and a blur value of 10. And so now when you hover over it, again, it might be kind of hard to see, but the box shadow just shows more prominently underneath the button. And so that gives it a nice little depth there. And so our button's looking great. The very last thing we have to do is just click on the button here which will open up the box to insert our link. And this is where we're going to insert the link that our cadence conversion had. And so that custom link that you had from before, just paste that in here. It will look something like this and make sure you have the hash symbol there. And then just click this button to confirm it. And now this button is hooked up to our cadence conversion so that when this button is clicked, it will go and it will automatically trigger our table of contents slide out. Now, the last thing we have to do for our fix button is to change the element settings. So up here in the upper right, there is element settings. And this is where we're going to set where the button is going to be on our page. And so you can see that we have a fixed section here, so that's good. For placement here, open up this dropdown and we wanna choose fixed bottom after scroll with no space below the footer. So we're gonna choose that there. The priority we can leave at 10. And then the scroll down distance till up here, this is how far the user scrolls before the button shows. I actually like keeping it at 300. It's perfect because the user usually scrolls right past the title of the blog post and then the button shows up. And so it kind of gets their attention and it's just a nice little animation that comes up. And so I'm gonna leave that at 300. For the width, this is very important. We do wanna change this to be auto. And so let's choose auto here. And then the position is we want this to come out from the right hand side of the screen. And so I'm gonna change this to right. And then I'm gonna have this be about 20 pixels out from the right and 20 pixels up from the bottom. And so that will kind of have it floating out in the lower right corner of our page. Then for the display settings here, we can open this up. And again, I only wanna show this on blog posts. I don't want this to show on my homepage. I don't want it to show on landing pages or anything. And so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna show on single posts right underneath the post section here. Once again, you can filter this down if you only wanna show it on a specific type of post with a certain category or tag, but I'm gonna leave this selected to all blog posts here. Then we can go into user settings here and we want this visible to all users. So we're gonna click all users here. And then for the device settings, again, I'm gonna leave this as all because I think this looks good on desktop and mobile. But if you're making two separate ones for desktop and for mobile, then you would come in here and you'd change that here. And that's it for our fixed element button. And so now all we have to do is publish this and let's go see how this looks. So let's go to publish and then I'll publish again. And now I'm just gonna go view my site here. So here's the main site. This is just one of the Cadence starter templates. It's a beautiful starter template. And I'm gonna go in here to the blog section of this starter template site. And you can see when you scroll down here, I just have this example outdoor tent review, which would be a product review. And we're gonna click into there. And let's first look at desktop since that's what we're viewing right now. And as you can see, the fix button does not show right away. And that's actually on purpose. I like having it that way. But as the user starts to scroll down here, watch the lower right. So they start to scroll down and the button just nicely shows up here. And so this will show as long as they're scrolling throughout the review here or the blog post that you have, and they can come and click on here and then say they're like, oh, I wanna go look at the product pricing. They can click that and it's gonna scroll directly to the product pricing page, or they can look at the product cons, or they can you know, go to one of the benefits here, and it's super nice. And then they can just click this button to close out of the table of contents, and then if they ever need to access it again, they can just click this button to reopen it. And so that's looking great on desktop. Let's see how this looks on mobile. So here I have an example mobile screen up, and once again, you do not see the button in the lower right because we're scrolled to the very top of the blog post, but as the user scrolls down with their finger, you can see the button nicely pops up here and it'll show at all times. They can click this, it slides up our table of contents conversion item from the bottom. They can go in here and choose product pros or you know product pricing and it'll go right to it and then they can X out of it. Now, one thing that is a little annoying for mobile users and I actually figured out a really cool way to fix this is if they open this, you know, imagine you tap this as a mobile user and you click product pros here, you would want the table of contents to probably get out of the way because there isn't a ton of room here. And if you had a lot of headings, 
this table of contents is going to take up your whole screen. And so if they came in here and they you know, chose product pricing and this table of contents took up the whole screen, they'd be like, well, did it work or what? And then they didn't have to come click this X. So I'm gonna show you a really cool trick to be able to automatically close this table of contents as soon as they click a link. So in order to do that, we need to go back into our cadence conversion item here. And so I'm gonna open this up and I'll click on the conversion item here. And once again, I'll go one story up to the conversion item. And so I have my conversion item block settings here. And this is where I said I was gonna circle back to before. And so if we go into the conversion settings here, you can see that there's a toggle that says close conversion on goal event. And so if we have our conversion goal to be click button, you can actually specify a CSS button class that it looks for. And if any button within this conversion with that class is tapped or clicked on, it will automatically close the conversion for you. And I know that might sound a little technical, but I'll show you how to do this here and it will just work for your website. So if we're looking back on mobile here and we have this table of contents up, I'm just gonna right click one of these links here and inspect it. And you can see right here that these items have a certain class that is cadence blocks, table of contents entry. And if I open up any of these, they're all gonna have that same class. And so all we have to do is double click this and copy this item right here. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna come back here. And so I'll take that and I'm just gonna paste it into this goal specific button class here. And so it looks like this, it's KB with the dashes, you know, table of contents, and then it's two underscores and then entry. And then I'm gonna click this toggle that says close conversion on goal event. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna say, hey, did someone click a button with this class in the cadence conversion? If so, automatically close this conversion, which is our table of contents slide out. So that looks good. Let's update this and let's go back into our blog post and see how this works. And so here I am back on the mobile page with our table of contents. The user is now going to click on the table of contents button here. Say they wanna to go to product pricing, boom. It goes to the product pricing. It knows that a button with that class was clicked within the conversion item. It automatically closes it. And that is a much nicer user experience so that that doesn't stay up and get in the way. And so now they can go come in here, they can read whatever they want. They can open this back up. They could go back up to the product overview and it's gonna close out and look great. And so that's all I have for you. I hope that this tutorial helped teach you how you can give your users a better mobile experience and desktop experience for a table of contents. If this video helped you out, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring that bell, and I'll see you guys in the next video.